the second section that I want to talk about is integrated weed management. This kind of ties in with the whole idea of integrated pest management. The way that we try and remember this whole section right here is just with a uh, little prevention avoidance detection PAD. Prevention is very important. Clean soil, clean transplants. The easiest weeds to control are those that never really get established in the first place. We have growers that do a great job at managing weeds initially. They come in, they'll do a great job weed. They're out there every week. They're very vigilant in hoeing, doing whatever they need to do. But then they say, well, I think I'll put down some mulch and they'll just go to their neighbor and buy a couple bales of hay and come out and spread it around and then they wonder why they end up with weed problems. They've brought in weed seed in their hay bales. Transplants, um, this can be more of an issue with the uh, disease issues, but with bald and burlap stuff in the ornamental world, there's often a lot of weed problems that are in those soil balls that they bring in because in the nurseries where these plants are put out, they'll do a very good job at managing certain weeds in the nurseries. But what they do is they use a lot of chemical management. So what they're doing is they're selecting for weeds that are resistant to those chemicals. And a lot of that, a lot of times that is uh, yellow nut sedge and things. So if they bring in a tree seedling and they plant it out and all of a sudden they get a lot of yellow nut sedge growing around that tree seedling that they brought in as a bald and burlap stock. So be aware of that. Kill the perennial weeds before you ever begin. Uh, reducing the weed seed bank is critical. It's very easy to do. This is something that the homeowners can do. They'll feel good about it. It'll keep them busy for a while and they'll be real impressed with what they can do uh, not using chemicals and things. Uh, Well-aged manures as well. People say, well my neighbor's got horses and he wants to give me lots of manure and I know organic matter is good for building up my soil so I'm bringing a couple of truckloads and put it out. And sure, manure is a great way to build up your soils in organic matter, but make sure that it's well aged, whether it's cow manure or horse manure or whatever. You want to make sure that whatever weed seeds are in that manure has had a chance to germinate and grow and kill before you bring it in. There are weed science graduate students whose whole careers have consisted of nothing but collecting weed seeds from manure and seeing how quick it germinates and things. Thankfully that wasn't me, but uh, it can be done. Reducing the weed seed bank, one of the easiest ways that growers can do that is simply through soil solarization. Go out. I always like to recommend that people work up a portion of their garden this fall because usually what happens here in Kentucky is it's wet in the spring and you don't want to work your soils when they're wet. But if they work up a portion of their garden this fall, they don't have to do the whole garden now, but even a portion of it, get it ready, put up a few raised beds just so that they drain quicker in the spring so they can get out there and get things planted early. Once they get those raised beds up next spring, you know, March, they call you up and they're ready to start planting things and it's too early or that, you can tell them, well, go out, put some clear plastic over that portion of the garden that you worked up last October and that will heat up that soil, get those weed seeds to flush and germinate. As soon as it flushes, they take off the plastic because you're going to get a frost in March and April and that. That will kill off that flush of weed seeds that are in that upper layer that are going to germinate. Their soils are ready to go then. As soon as it gets warm enough, they can then go in and plant then and uh, they don't have to rework that soil. Anytime you work soils, you can bring up weed seed from deeper in the soil. But if you create that stale seed bed and reduce that weed seed bank, uh, that's going to be very beneficial. Clean fields and hedgerows, I talked about that a little bit. Downwind, you know, you might annoy the neighbors if you have a lot of weeds and things, but it's good for the bees. Upwind, you want it nice and clean. Clean mulch, I do know strawberry growers that have had to take fields out of production because they brought in straw and that that had weed seed in it that they just couldn't get control again. Clean equipment, it's very, again, sanitation. Work the weediest areas of your fields laugh. This is more for your market growers that have bigger areas that they're working in that. I mean, if you only have a 500 square foot garden, it doesn't really matter 
where you work at when. But if you know you have a grower that's got a one acre field or something that they're market growers, tell them to work the weediest area of that field last. Make sure they clean off the equipment before they go from field to field too if they have larger fields. Because uh, tubers, nutlets, rhizomes, any of those perennial structures that allow weeds to overwinter can easily be spread from field to field on equipment. So you want to make sure that it's nice and clean. It's not that hard to throw a broom in the back of the tractor or something. Just take five minutes before you go field to field, clean it off. Uh, have one portion of your field where you're always cleaning your equipment too because that's going to keep any of that uh, potentially hazardous, dangerous stuff in one portion of your field. You can then come in and spray that portion with some uh, herbicide and kill off anything that grows there. Avoid areas that are known to be problematic. Areas that have poor drainage, weeds will grow there. Areas that are very acidic or very alkaline, I always try and emphasize in all my talks the importance of having soil tests done. Uh, if your soils are too acidic or too alkaline, there are weeds that will grow there, guaranteed. Nutrient deficient, again, there are weeds that will grow there. Compacted, there are weeds that will grow there. So avoid areas that you know that have problems. Detection, it's very important that you walk through your fields. Um, you know, so some of our larger grain growers now with Roundup Ready crops and that, you know, if you have 500 acres, 1,000 acres, they can spray it all from the cab of the tractor. They might not go back out and check their field again for uh, a month at a time, two months at a time. If you're, <clears throat> they've come in, they've sprayed, it's all under control. But your small growers, your homeowners and that, they should be out there walking through their fields or their gardens every day. Even their little landscape planting around the house and that. Just get out there. If they see something unusual, tell them to give you a call, give me a call, whoever, and say, I saw this thing and I don't know what it is. You know, I'm, I'm sure none of you are bored. You all have more to do than you have time to get it done. But it's better if you know of problems that are potentially existing uh, before they turn into real problems. You know, that's how we find issues like the Asian longhorn beetle and things like that. People are out and say, hey, my trees are dying and they, they shouldn't be dying. So they contact their agent and say, what's going on here? Same thing with weeds. There are weeds that are getting to be a more of a problem that we never had to deal with before here in Kentucky. Uh, there are herbicide resistant weeds that are continuing to move in. Most of them are moving in from the Midwest where growers have relied upon certain types of herbicides year after year. Uh, things like uh, Roundup resistant horseweed is blowing in across the river from Indiana and Illinois and uh, northeast uh, that portion of Kentucky, Oldham County and up that way and things. You know, uh, Palmer amaranth is moving into this area from the Midwest and the South as well. It's a very aggressive pigweed for those of you that haven't had to deal with that one before. It's like red root pigweed on steroids. It's, it's just a very difficult weed to control once it gets established. So if you see a pigweed and or somebody comes and says, I've got this pigweed problem that I don't know how to deal with and that it's, it's just, it doesn't, it seems like it's something different. Could be something like that. So just be aware of what's going on out there. Note any weed management failures uh, because that could indicate herbicide resistant weeds. And if you do think you have some herbicide resistant weeds in your county that you haven't had before, contact me, contact JD, contact one of us and we'll come out, collect some seed and we can do a quick and easy test uh, just to see if we do have some herbicide resistant weeds because uh, the Weed Science Society, we like to track where these herbicide resistant weeds are located around the U.S. It allows us to help develop better management systems for these. Uh, make a simple map. It doesn't have to be this great big elaborate GPS coordinates and graphical information system or that. Just a pencil and paper and sketch out where things are going on in your fields. I mean hopefully your growers are making a planting map of their vegetable garden so that they're rotating their fields. Uh, you know, you don't want to grow tomatoes in the same portion of your garden year after year after year. So, you know, just tell them to make little notes on their garden map where they had certain weed problems that are showing up as well.